today I'm going to be going over stock takes and stock adjustments for NDIR. Um, for this video I'm just going to be covering stock takes, but we'll have another video on the channel soon that covers stock adjustments. Now just to go over this briefly at the start, just so you know, if you're looking to adjust the stock that's currently in your system, you'll want to look at the stock adjustments video. If you're looking to replace all of the stock values in the system with new values, uh, that means quantities or costs, you're going to want to use a stock take and this is the video for you. So jumping straight into it, if uh, in order to find our stock takes and or adjustments in Deer, we're going to want to scroll up to our inventory section of Deer. Um, if you have the other layout, it will once again just be in the inventory section. We'll click into that and then we have our option on the left here to create a new stock adjustment or stock take and we have our option on the right to view our current stock takes and or adjustments. I'm going to click into this option just to show you what the stock taker list looks like before we go into the actual stock takes themselves. So here you can see a list of all the stock takes that have currently happened within this account. You can see their status, who's actually carried them out, a reference field as to what they are or whatever you want to reference within that stock take, and the location where it's occurring. Um, here you can see the type. Since stock takes and stock adjustments are listed in the same place, you can see them side by side here and filter on the type in order to find out um, whether it was adjustment or stock take. To create a new one, I'm just going to press the plus button here and then do a new stock take. From here, um, we, are set, we, are, we are immediately given some parameters on how we're actually going to carry out our stock take. So firstly, we have the effective date of when it's going to um, occur. We also have the location where it's going to occur in. So this will be just your warehouse specific locations, but below we can add in additional fields for certain bins we're gonna do a stock take for, um, or certain pick zones we're gonna do a stock take for. On our right here, we can split, uh, pick an expense account. Now, when the stock take is complete, the value of the goods is gonna be posted to this expense account to then reconcile against your current inventory. So I often uh, recommend using the opening balance account. Uh, this account doesn't actually have the opening uh, an opening balance account, but that's what I tend to recommend so that it's a unique account where you can find the value of those stock takes. Um, however, anything actually works as long as you know that this is where your stock takes up values are being posted to. Then finally here we have the reference field. Now this reference field is going to be used, one, for the uh, manual journal being posted by the um, stock take itself, and two, so you can identify what that stock take has been used for within Deer. So on new stock takes, I often recommend, on your first stock take, I recommend using opening balance, and then a date, and then for any stock takes after that, it'd be like your quarterly stock take, followed by the date, which is the 23rd, second 23 today so that's just going to help us identify it both within zero and within dear um, or quickbooks if that is integrated for you and once all of these uh, parameters have been set up we can then actually move on to the stock tick itself and carrying it out um, as I said uh, a little bit ago within our additional filters here we can specify it a bit more in detail of what we're actually be carrying out the stock take on or where we're going to be carrying it out so like I said before, you can do it by bin, pick zone, or um, stock locator area, or you can do specific products in your stock take. So if you're only picking a certain product that you're trying to start a re recount or re-add the value to, um, you can pick that within here as well. If I then scroll down, we have our actual stock take values. So in Deer, any stock takes or adjustments are broken into two sections, non-zero stock, which is any stock that currently exists within the system. So if there is stock for it and you're amending those values, it will be a non-zero stock or zero stock, which is going to give you a list of um, is where you're going to put anything without any stock against it currently. Um, so once you're in any of these sections, you're going to want to click or well, before that, you will want to click start. Um, I need to pick a location where I'm actually carrying out my stock take. So I'm just going to carry out in warehouse here, and then you're going to want to click start. What pressing start is actually going to do is it's going to prevent any stock movements or transactional movements within this area from that point onward. So any orders against locations in that area will be frozen and no new orders will be creatable against that location. 
Now the reason for that is obviously you want your stock take to be accurate and if there are still orders going on in the background while your stock take is occurring, it's going to cause issues. Um, one way to circumvent this if it's going to be an issue is to prepare an import file prior to uh, pressing start so you can then just drag and drop that in at the point of pressing start. So now that we've actually pressed start and our stock take has begun, um, this is where you would then send out your warehouse staff to then count up all the different parts that you have listed within the warehouse. Here, it's showing, Deer is showing us the only item where we have some in stock or should have some in stock, and that's going to be our uh, Agma bulk that we have here. Since that's the only thing listed here, we can presume that is the only item we have in stock currently. If we then go to zero stock, we can begin adding any items that we don't currently have in stock to the list. Now you can either do this manually for everything that's counted, you can then search for the product, specify it against the bin, um, and then you can add an amount that you're actually adding to the system alongside the cost. The average cost will pull through here, however you can actually overwrite this if you want if there's a specific cost you want to put against that item. From here, um, you either do both of those options, well that option meaning that you adjust what is currently in the system and then also um, add new things to the system or you can do it in bulk via an import using the export and import options. Now here we have export and export all products. The difference between these is export is just going to give you a, a blank template to fill out whereas export all products is going to give you a template with every single part you have in your system on it. From there you can go through and delete what isn't required and add quantities and costs to what is required. So I'll quickly show you what that looks like. As with most files from here, it's a CSV type and it's just going to open up a little Excel spreadsheet template for us to look at like so. As you can see within here, we have a whole lot of products because we exported all of our products from the system. It's pulled through that average, co uh, average cost, but it hasn't pulled through any quantities since this is a stock take. So from here, we would then have to go in and add in our quantities for all of our items included. We could also add bins, batch and serial numbers and expiry dates if we wanted to. If we are using some things like serial numbers or having two of the same part in a specific bin, we just need to copy and paste the line and then we could split that out per value. So for example, if we had two bins, we could have this item against bin one and we could have it against bin two. Or we could have it against serial one and serial two. So if you do have any of those instances, that's how you would then deal with it. Other than that, we're just gonna add in our quantities Delete out anything that we're not going to be importing back into the system. Um, and from there, we can then re-import the file, which is going to then give us a list um, of items to then re-import. Since our Agma bulk is already in here, that wasn't going to work because it would have just updated this. But we can always come in here and import this manually like so. So we can now say in that batch we actually have five goods that have been stock take, uh, that have been included in the stock take. Once we're happy that all of our relevant fields have either been imported or added manually, our next job would then just be to come back to the top here, and then we can either print out a stock take for someone to go and carry out, um, or we can then press complete. Once we press complete, um, if there aren't any errors, I haven't added a quantity in for this item. Um, this area will then be unlocked and usable again and then the only value or stock within this area will be what was listed below. So we will only have this product and five of that and two of these products here. Once you're happy with, uh, if you're happy with that, you can then go to your financials where you'll then see the journal which is posted for your value of your account. As you can see this one is minus 11,931. And that's because there was obviously £11,000 worth of stock in this account and I've then reduced it down to whatever it is now. So that would then be posted to the journal and then it would have to be reconciled against the stock. So um, the stock that has been removed would also have to be accounted for within zero. If you're not happy with this value and it doesn't look right as to uh, what you actually found on your stock take, you can then just either undo the stock take to revert everything to the way it was 
or you can void off the stock tape by pressing the void button here. That's all from me. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments, um, and I will have another video on stock adjustments coming shortly. Bye!